Good evening, everybody. The January 23rd meeting of the Board of Trustees for the Burleson Independent School District is now called to order at 5.30 p.m. The meeting was duly posted according to legal requirements and a quorum is present. We welcome all employees and guests to our meeting. Thank you all for being here. This is the time we have set aside for open forum. Ashley, do we have any cards? There are no cards, so I'm not gonna read all of these paragraphs. Um, at this time, the Board of Trustees of the Burleson Independent School District will adjourn into closed session at 5.30 p.m. for the purpose and consideration of matters for which closed sessions are authorized by Title V, Chapter 551 of the Texas Government Code, Sections .071 through .084. Whereupon the superintendent, at the request of the president of the Board of Trustees, will present for the board's consideration or discussion the following matters. A, consider teacher or administrator employment or other appropriate personnel matters. B, deliberate a negotiated contract for a prospective gift or donation. C, deliberate the use of security personnel, devices, and or audits, including intruder de the intruder detection audit. D, deliberate a matter regarding a student or student discipline. E, deliberation regarding real property and F, consultation with attorney. And on item A, it's to consider teacher and or administrator employment. Thank you very much. And at this time, we will adjourn to closed session. The Board of Trustees of the Burleson Independent School District will reconvene to open session at 6.32 p.m. We have a few items to take care of from the closed se session. Number one, I recommend the Board of Trustees approve and or ratify and approve the following individuals to be employed on teacher contracts for the 2022-2023 school year, subject to assignment by the superintendent and pending their meeting the following requirements. Number one, proper degrees required. Number two, appropriate certification requirements as specified by the Texas Education Agency, and number three, clearance of a criminal history check. Could I please have a motion? Ryan, in a second. Michael, all in favor? I see none opposed, the motion carries. I recommend that the Board of Trustees approve the following individual to be employed on an administrator contract subject to the assignment by the superintendent and pending their meeting the following requirements. One, proper degree is required. Two, appropriate certification requirements as specified by the Texas Education Agency. And three, clearance of a criminal history check. Could I please have a motion? Andy, and second, Jerry, all in favor? I see none opposed, the motion carries. <laughs> Number three, I recommend that the Board of Trustees grant the Board President the authority to approve new hires between now and the regular meeting in February. The Board will consider ratifying those hires at the next meeting. Could I please have a motion? Pat, and a second. Jerry, all in favor? And I see none opposed. The motion carries. All right, would you please stand and say the Pledge of Allegiance with me? Texas flag, I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. All right, at this time, I recommend that the Board of Trustees adopt the order of items for the January 23rd, 2023 agenda as presented. Could I please have a motion? Sean, in a second? Pat, all in favor? All right. See, there will be none opposed. The motion passes. It is time for special recognition with Dr. Yes. Hill. Good evening, everyone. January is Board Appreciation Month, and we are here tonight to celebrate you and to thank you for your dedication and service to the <coughs> students and staff members of Burleson ISD. Uh, we are going to put together a historical timeline of our BISD schools and facilities that we will place throughout the building soon. 
Um, I'm not going to put these gloves on because I will look like Mickey Mouse if I do. And I'm not going to do the voice either. But we're going to begin with um, the Academy at Nola Dunn. These are the graphics that will be posted. We're going to put them up here, though, so y'all can see them. And um, we thank you for the work that you do for Burleson ISD and hope we, that you will enjoy this walk down memory lane. Thank you. Good evening, Board of Trustees and Dr. J. My name is Kelly Utterback, Principal at the Academy of Nola Dunn. I'm going to go through some bullet-pointed timelines of the history of our building. In 1909, Burleson Elementary School was built at 201 South Dobson Street. Then in 1950, it was renamed Nola Dunn Elementary School after longtime Burleson resident and teacher, Mrs. Nola Dunn. In 2000, under the direction of then Superintendent Dr. Jeff Turner, we were renamed the Academy at Nola Dunn, uh, a school to be based on brain-based learning on, uh, under the philosophies of Dr. Eric Jensen and Dr. Liesl McConchie. And we, at that time, became Burleson's first choice school, which set the stage for many choice schools to come. And finally, in 2010, at 201 South Dobson Street, our beautiful building was built where we currently uh, have school, and it was helped built by teachers using our brain-based philosophies. Thank you guys so much for all you do for our wonderful school district. By the way, for all those in attendance, this is School Board Appreciation Month. We are appreciating our school board. Well, Dr. Emerson, Board of Trustees, uh, just want to reemphasize what Michaela said. We really, really appreciate y'all and what y'all do for us. Uh, Burleson High School, the current facility opened uh, the year of 1997, uh, 98, 98 school year. Uh, as many of you probably already know, uh, 100 John Jones was named John Jones, and it was renamed to Elk Drive. I didn't know that up to about a couple years ago. So, um, as many of you also know, our building is made up of 115 classrooms, 18 bathrooms, 28 exterior doors, a large state-of-the-art collaborative learning space, library, 900-seat auditorium, band hall, two gyms, 3,000-seat arena, and multiple career programs, specialized areas. And uh, interesting, fa I mean, interesting thing about our campus, everyone that comes on campus wants to take a picture with our famous bronze elk. Uh, and that created a little controversy in the has created a little bit of controversy in the beginning, but I won't go there. Uh, we also have a real bull elk mount from 1910, which that, that's actually the original uh, original Burleson High School was in 19 established in 1910. But that real bull elk hold many records in uh, in Colorado, and I think I think the story says that it was shot from 800 yards away with one shot. So. Uh, lastly, I just want to say I'm extremely proud to be the longest tenured principal in that building, and uh, that is known as BHS. So, thank you. Good evening. I'm Marla Bennett, the 10th principal of Mound in Elementary and the longest tenured <laughs> principal go. in Mound's history. <laughs> you saw my thunder. Um, which celebrated 60 years of academic excellence in 2022. Our school is Burleson's only elementary campus not bearing the name of an individual, but named after the area Brushy Mound. Many community leaders and famous people have attended our classrooms and gained an educational foundation at our school. Kelly Clarkson attended our school and Beverly Powell Volkman, to name a few. A few. Um, Beverly Volkman Powell, sorry. We became, a, I've known her for a while. <laughs> we became a school of choice in 2016 a leader in Me Lighthouse School in 2020, and a 2022, in 2022, we became a Lighthouse Academic Honor Roll School, um, an achievement we're very proud of. We are proud to continue our legacy of growing leaders and learners. We're very excited about the new building um, program that we're um, about to embark on with our new gym. We're excited to see what's gonna happen there, and we really appreciate all the support that our Board of Trustees gives us each and every day and the successful history that we have, um, that you've helped us um, provide our students. Thank you so much. Good evening, Dr. J, Board of Trustees. I feel like I need to count my bathrooms now. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't do that. Um, and no Kelly Clarkson either, so I, I feel like I'm not prepared, but on behalf of um, everybody at Frazier, we just want to say thank you so much for your unwavering support of our staff and our students. Our building opened in 1963 in what is today's STEAM, 
Um, we were in that building over 40 years before moving to our current building in 2008. And so we are excited that in 2023, we will celebrate 60 years as a campus and 15 in our current location. So thank you guys for all you do and we surely appreciate it. President Eisner, Dr. Jimerson, Board of Trustees, it's an honor to be able to share a little bit about Hughes that you may or may not know. Um, I'm assuming most of you do know. So, um, <laughs> but is it cage? Is it the cocaine? <laughs> so in 1970, uh, Burleson Junior High was built at 316 Southwest Thomas Street. Shortly thereafter, the building was named Pauline G. Hughes Middle School. However, were it not for former BISD superintendent J. Lyndall Hughes, what we know now as HMS may very, very well have become GMS, Guggles Middle School, mm -hmm. because that was Pauline's maiden name. And I don't know that I got the pronunciation correct. Uh, can anybody verify? Guggles? <laughs> We're going to go with Guggles. Um, she married uh, Mr. Hughes in 1933, and now we have Hughes Middle School. HMS, uh, uh, HMS underwent a remarkable makeover that began in the spring of 2018 making Hughes Middle School one of the most modern and technologically advanced campuses in North Texas. A couple of notable alumni, one of which you've already heard about, uh, Kelly Clarkson of American Idol fame and Stacy Sakura. Um, she was a two-time Olympic volleyball player. And in addition to those two notable alumni, if you're an alumni of Hughes Middle School, would you raise your hand? See, we're everywhere. And so, outstanding. Uh, Stacy and, and Kelly have nothing on you guys, for sure. Um, learning and exploration are alive and well at Hughes Middle School today, and if you're ever in the neighborhood, we would love for you to come by for a little tour and a cup of coffee. Thanks again for all you do. Hello, everybody. I'm Candace Cook from Norwood Environmental Science Academy, and we are very excited to appreciate you all this evening. Um, our campus was built in 1976, and it was named after a very famous basketball coach in our district, Coach Norwood. Interesting fact, if you go to Roscoe's in town and you are going through the walk-up, you can see a picture of one of his groups of students that he was actually a coach for. Um, so now moving forward in 2020, we became a school of choice. And so this is an extra special thing that we would like to thank our um, school board and just you guys knowing how much becoming an environmental science academy has just transitioned our kids in so many different opportunities. And we are very, very thankful for everything that you do for our community and those, uh, all those things that you're going to be doing for our future innovations as well. So we are very oh, grateful to you. Yes, so we are very, very excited, so thank you very much. Hello everyone, Dr. Jimerson, members of the board. As the new principal of Taylor Elementary, I learn about its history every single day, especially with my secretary that's been there for so many years. Yes. Um, so Jack Taylor was opened in 1968 by Jack Taylor. He was very well known in the community. He was actually the mayor from 1960 to 1962, and he donate, donated a lot of land uh, to Burleson, and you can, a lot of the parks are, were donated by him. Um, a lot of, uh, something that's very interesting is that they, had, they buried a time capsule in 1968. The first sixth grade class uh, buried a time capsule, and they opened it last year. And so let me tell you, I wasn't born in 19... In, <laughs> 1986, my apologies, my 86. And so I was not born in 1986. Wait, wait, wait. You weren't born in 1986? No. no. And so the Boo. conversation. Boo this man. The conversations that I have with the kids and learning about everything that happened back then is just amazing. Um, and so I want to go ahead and thank y'all for everything that you do for Burleson ISD and especially for Taylor Elementary. Thanks for being a good sport, girl. Of course, of course. <laughs> hey, don't let them talk bad about you, man. I got you back. I'm going to start off by saying, first, I was, was born in 1986. Wow. <laughs> Booing. Wow. Um, Crossroads uh, High School is also home to a second campus. It is a dual campus with Crossroads High School and Right Turn Dispense Center. They are a unique arrangement that allows students that uh, get a discipline placement to still maintain their success to where they can still move back to their transition back to their home campus and find um, 
an education that's still continuing from when they left. Crossroads is a high school. It's a dropout prevention uh, campus. It's been around for about 20 years. It is a unique setting that allows students that have gotten off their traditional path to find a unique path that still allows them to achieve graduation and move on to those next steps. We've had uh, people in the workplace. We've had people go to two-year colleges, four-year colleges, and trade schools and find success, and many come back uh, to celebrate what Crossroads is. Uh, every year we have a speaker at graduation that is a former Crossroads graduate, which we will do again this year. And we have had, um, the number is fluxed. We've had eight or nine different numbers, but the graduation that's come up this Thursday will be the largest winter graduation in the history of Crossroads High School with 41 students. And that is due to the support of the school board superintendent supporting the teachers and the staff at Crossroads. Thank you all very much. Good evening, my name is Rebecca Hinkle and I am blessed to be the principal at STEAM Academy at Stribling Elementary. In 1998, William Stribling Elementary opened, named after Mr. William Stribling, who was a leader in the community in our school district. Um, and on behalf of the Stribling Stars, I want to thank each of you for your support of our Stribling Stars through those years. Um, we became STEAM Academy at Stribling Elementary in 2016, and at that point we feel like we got even better at nurturing our students' natural tendency towards curiosity and creativity. A fun fact I wanted to share with you guys tonight is that soon after we became STEAM Academy at Stribling Elementary, oh, I'm making a noise. Um, yes, we got an email from Mr. Stribling's grandchildren asking if we would send them some of our school t-shirts. So I think it's kind of fun thinking that somewhere in the Bryan College Station area there are some children running around with STEAM Academy at Stribling t-shirts. So that's kind of fun. I go to Aggie Land a lot, so maybe I'll run into him one day. <laughs> do you have a kid there or something? I do. Oh, I've heard I that. do. <laughs> Um, but with your support and thanks to your support, we continue to grow and improve STEAM learning for our students um, every year, and we couldn't do it without the support that you give us. So thank you very much for all you do. Good evening, board members and Dr. J. Um, I'm here to talk about Kerr Middle School, which opened in 2000 and 2001 with 545 sixth and seventh graders. It was named after Nick Kerr, who spent 36 years in Burleson ISD as multiple different things, including the principal of Burleson High School. And we opened in the former Burleson High School. In 2017, through the generosity of the community and obviously the support of our board members, we uh, had a bond election that uh, allowed us to have a brand new building uh, out on <coughs> Hidden Creek. And we opened in 2019, 2020 and currently hold 1,271 students, 6th through 8th grade. Now, one of the things I've learned is middle schoolers can do anything, and I think I said this last year, was they had the choice of the mascots. They had a choice because we were black and white. They had the choice of zebras, uh, skunks, penguins, or cougars. Knowing middle schoolers now, I'm really surprised they didn't pick coug uh, skunks because they would have thought it was really funny. But they did pick cougars, and uh, we're certainly glad. I do have three current members on our staff that were on the original staff. And in fact, one still uh, is the sponsor of a club called Make a Difference Club, and that's Dinah McGee. So thank you for all you've done. Staff member, or School board members, Dr. Jimerson, sorry. I'm so used to talking to my staff. I'm always used to talking to my staff and starting that way. So uh, thank you for all that you do. I just want to echo the sentiment that's already been said, but we really do appreciate all that you do for our students and our school district as a whole. Um, I'm here representing Branson Elementary, which opened in 2002 and was named in recognition of uh, Mr. Richard Branson, who was a longtime resident of Burleson, supporter of the, of the school district. I believe his wife was also a teacher of the district as well. Um, and <laughs> fun fact about Branson in 2010, and some of you probably already remember this, but in 2010, we affectionately refer to it as the great... Columbus Day weekend flood occurred at our campus as a waterline <laughs> busted, where our students were able to take a roughly a two and a half month long field trip to Centennial High School, I believe, and see the beautiful new facilities there. Um, so that, that did occur in 2010, so there was a little bit of a remodel that took place. 
But in 2016, the school was rebranded as a school of choice along with four of the other campuses in the district. Uh, Branson was selected as the school for the arts. And whereas over the years we've added different art classes from theater, audiovisual, dance, violin, piano, and smorgasbord of arts classes, um, I do have to say that although Kelly Clarkson did not attend Branson Elementary, <laughs> I, I, feel, I feel very comfortable in saying that if she had, she may have two or three more Grammys, that, more than she has. So, thank you for all that you do. That was good. That was good. That was good. That was, that was good. That was good. All right. Now, don't let the gamesmanship begin, all right? Well, I was just going to say a, a few things with some of my peers that have been up here. So, I was born before 86. So I would have been around for that. Uh, do for, not boo this man. For all of us that have... Our building, the, the four of us that share a building, we have 13 student bathrooms. I just did that up. All the rest of the and um, it's good to know. There's more staff bathrooms. I didn't include those. Uh, but I wanted to speak today a little bit about our namesake, Ms. Hike. Um, so Ms. Hike attended Burleson schools from first grade through 12th grade. She was a salutatorian at BHS before heading up to TCU and then coming right back to start her teaching career. Uh, she worked in Burleson ISD for 39 years, holding many different positions, assistant principal, principal, counselor, teacher, assistant superintendent at one point. Um, and we are just so excited to have her still with us. And I want to thank Ms. Pat Orell for um, arranging a visit. We actually got to have her on campus along with her longtime secretary and friend, Ms. Donna Miller, uh, just a month ago um, for a performance that we had. Our students got to meet her, staff got to meet her. Uh, it was just really cool for them to meet the celebrity that is on all the name that's on all their shirts that they wear all the time. So we're really excited to continue um, serving in her, um, in her name and, and carrying on her legacy uh, and look forward to doing that as our attendance zone continues to grow. We've got a, a lot of development coming in and, and really excited about that and appreciative of all the support that you guys give us. So thank you. Good evening, Dr. Jimerson and Board of Trustees. I'm Kim Kimberling, principal at Brock Elementary, longest tenure principal at Brock Elementary. Um, we opened in 2008, and I was the assistant principal, and since then um, I have moved up to principal. Um, on behalf, we want to say thank you on behalf of all our staff and students um, for all of the, the things that you do and your dedication to the students of Burleson ISD and Brock Elementary. Um, Brock was built in 2008. Prior to us being able to move into the building that we're in now, we were at the old academy before that was torn down for the new academy so we were there until January and then we moved into our new building we still say the new building because out where we are people don't always realize where we are and we're like we're the new campus 14 years later but it still looks new because we've taken great care of it so thanks to our kiddos that are doing that so it was named after Miss Ann Brock I think Miss Warrell did work with her I saw that she was the um, teacher of the year at Frazier and I think maybe you were there with her and then went on to be their region 11 teacher yes and state region 11 and then state teacher um, one of the things that she did do for our entire district was she was the pioneer of our talented and gifted program here in Burleson ISD and she continued to do that up until her passing so that really was her passion to continue to grow students and find their talents um, one of the things that we do at Brock um, that you may not be aware of we continue to give students the opportunity to grow their talents um, by expanding our music program we do fundraising each year so that our third through fifth grade students can all participate in music lessons free of charge from Valerie's Music. We do pay them, but we do fundraising to do that, so they're all able to take those free um, lessons during the school day. So they take things such as keyboarding, guitar, violin, and we're going to add percussion. So that is one of the fun facts. Um, uh, also, that's I be loud. Do, yes. <laughs> um, Ann Brock also was a Red Raider, and so our notable newest Red Raiders, Chapman Lewis. Um, and so I am not a Red Raider, however. However, my brother is, so I've become a Red Raider recently. Yeah, but, the whole family's all in on yes, the Yes, we're I all in. We all in. We are the brand. Um, so, anyway, thank you guys for everything you do, and thanks for making all of these things possible for our students and staff. And Chapman Lewis started. Yes, he graduated he did. early. He graduated early from and moved Centennial, in. Mm -hmm. and I guess finished in December. Yes, and is already out there. Say, I saw him tweet something out. Already taking yes. classes He's at. Already there. 
Texas Tech and add on his old Centennial High School sweats. Yes. So He's being taken care of. I sure I said you have the colors on. I do. Good evening, Dr. Jimerson and Board of Trustees. I'm Laurie Allen, um, principal at Iring Klinkscale Elementary. It was established in 2009, and just thinking of the other campuses, I was actually on that committee um, when those buildings were put together. So it's a blessing to be there. I'm about to start my 22nd year with the district. And I remember my daughter, my only daughter, being born 2009, April, and I have a picture of her in front of the little yellow jacket. And here she is at STEAM about to start um, her freshman year at Burleson High School, 14 years. And I am the longest standing principal as well. I'm just very blessed to be there. Um, Burleson, I just sit back and I think about even the teacher job fairs that we had with Bransom. I remember the lines I come from Norwood and the changes. Um, you have done an amazing job at what you do in each and every day, so thank you. All right. Good afternoon. I'm Andre Walker. I really want to say thank you for having me here. We appreciate everything you do. I am the assistant principal. I'm the only one, I think, on the panel right now. <laughs> Mr. Bowman Volen told me that I was going to be speaking. <laughs> So, I believe Mr. Bowman is on jury duty he is. because his residence, he, he just moved to the area. Yep. His residence is still in deep East Texas. Mm -hmm. he, is in and Texas. he is serving junior, what is it, in Marshall, Texas yes. is what mm -hmm. I heard. So right. he is in Marshall serving jury duty. He is. Uh, I poke so fun at him all we're day. we're glad you're here, sir. Thank you. First and foremost, I want to say, I've only been here for one semester, so I want to say thank you all for hiring me. <laughs> 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 we are appreciated. I'm the youngest, but I'm not the youngest. <laughs> I graduated in 1986. All right. So as you can see, yes, sir. Uh, Centennial High School, I'm proud to serve as assistant principal there, was established in uh, fall of 2010 with 750 students um, in ninth and 10th grades. Um, the learning center concept that we have right now was uh, modeled after Westside High School in Omaha, Nebraska. These are all new facts to me, fun facts, because if you're the new guy, there's always someone telling you, this is what used to be, this is how it is. Um, there are still 19 original staff members working there, I'm sorry, nine, and I got a lot of this information from some of those guys. One of them is right over there, Mr. Shea, he also gave me a lot of information, and it's greatly appreciated. I can only imagine. <laughs> <laughs> um, all the irrigation that you see for our lawn care is provided by the two ponds that are in the back of the school. Um, we don't use any city water. I thought that was nice. I thought there was, I could go back there and fish, but <laughs> obviously I can't. <laughs> During the 12 and a half years, the CHS um, has also been a temporary location for three other BISD schools, Branson Elementary. Um, as a result of the flood, they were there in the Sea Wing. Uh, it was the original home of the STEAM Middle School. It was in the uh, East Wing, and also the original home of Burleson Collegiate High School. And again, it was, it was in the E Wing. Um, also, another fun fact, each year, uh, a member of the Armed Forces Bowl uses CHS to practice. And this year, we were um, blessed to have Baylor on our, our campus and practice there. You use the term blessed very loosely. <laughs> Just kidding. I just kidding. I just kidding. Hey, hey, hey. I saw those. I saw that. And again, I do want to reach out and say, hey, thank you for everything that y'all do for us. We appreciate it. And Mr. Bowman told me to make sure that he apologized for not being here. So thank y'all. Good afternoon. Good evening, Dr. Jefferson, Board of Trustees. I'm Courtney McLennan, Principal of STEAM Middle School. STEAM opened its doors in 2015 in a repurposed elementary school. And one of the fun facts about STEAM Middle School is that it was opened without a bond. And I think that that just goes to show what you all do and the hard work that you all put in to find things to make it work for our students no matter what. When Burleson decided to add a middle school, you all polled our community and found that a STEM focus and a fine arts focus were the top priorities. I am proud to say that our students at STEAM Middle School get the opportunity to do and excel at both. Our students are exposed to a wide range of hands-on learning from coding and robotics to theater and music. They're encouraged to think critically and creatively and develop the skills they need to succeed in the 21st century. When you walk in our doors, you will see math taking place in art classes, you'll see science in choir, and you're gonna see leading and learning throughout. Our school is a vibrant community and it is dynamic and we are so proud to be a part of it. 
I did not know this was going to be comedy hour, so I did not prepare a lot of jokes. Um, I will say another fun fact, I have grown up in the Burleson ISD system, and so I've been able to say thank you from all the way to the bottom to the top. I got to have Ann Brock as one of my teachers at Fraser Middle School, which I get to work at now, and so it's just been a really great opportunity to see everything that you do. So thank you. Well, well, well. I'm just kidding. I know, right? Good evening, Dr. Jimson, Board of Trustees. I am here representing Game Development Design School at Burleson ISD. So in 2016, Realm started as a school of choice within Kerr Middle School with about 100 students. We moved into our beautiful building in 2021 and had a name change that matched our unmatched talent. The game, you see what I did there? <laughs> um, game Development Design School focuses on video game development and graphic design in a blended self-paced learning environment through Modern Classrooms Project approach. And a fun fact, GDDS's inaugural class of 2023 will graduate 23 graduates in May of this year. Thank you. First graduating class, that's pretty cool. Good evening, Board of Trustees, President Eisner, Dr. Jemison. Uh, I am the principal of Burleson Collegiate High School. My name is Sam Bonsu, Jr. Um, fun fact, um, actually, he stole my two seconds for uh, BCHS. We did start at Centennial High School's wing um, in 2016 and then moved into the old, new for us, old high school, old Kerr, um, <laughs> but then also the new renovated wing that we have. We moved there uh, after, during COVID, uh, in, the 300, in the 100 wing, and then GDDS was there with us. You know, we're so fortunate and blessed to have multiple choice campuses. Uh, and I have to say this, because I tell people this outside, we have five high schools in Burleson Independent School District, with us being one of them. Uh, and so, uh, fun fact, I would say, is that our campus, um, not bragging, but it's our students doing this work. Um, the average of the associate's degree, average the completion for associate's degree is 40%. Our is campus, that in the state? In the state. Right. Um, our campus uh, every year uh, averages 80%, uh, with last year being 82%. Uh, that's a fun fact for us because we love academics, right? And so um, that's something we like to bring. And that says you guys are ensuring success for your students, and we appreciate that too. Thank y'all for everything. Good evening, Dr. Jimerson, Board of Trustees. I'm shifting gears a little bit. I'm Randy Woolsey. I'm the director of CTE here for the district. I'm here tonight to talk about our agricultural facility. It is a beautiful, as you all know, 51-acre um, facility. We have a covered arena, which is actually pictured here. We also have an equipment barn, and then we have an entire barn dedicated to our swine, which is pretty unique. Um, I just want to say thank you so much because truly, and I've been involved with FFA 4-H almost my entire life, I know of no other ag facility like this, true, hands down. Um, so that speaks volumes of you and your support for our kiddos. I also have been honored and privileged the last two, two and a half weeks to be at the Johnson County Livestock Show as well as the Fort Worth Livestock Show. That's actually, I drove straight home to change and then here from the stock show today. Um, but it's been such an honor because I get to see kids getting to participate outside of the classroom with things they learn inside the classroom, but because of what the ag facility provides for them. A lot of our students here do live in the city so they don't have a place to keep an animal project. This provides them that opportunity. So just thank you so much for that. Dr. Jimerson, members of the board, I'm here to talk, last but not least, about the venue. Um, it was uh, established in 2021, and the venue is a, 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 an incredible facility that provides opportunity to show, showcase many district programs. Uh, we recognize students' accomplish, accomplishments in fine arts and athletics at College Day signing celebrations at the venue. Uh, Branson performed their musical this December, uh, the North Pole Musical. Uh, BIC will award the best f student filmmakers at the venue, uh, uh, sorry, at the ninth annual BIC Festival Film Festival in April. 
BIC Esports hosted two tournaments at the venue, and our seventh tournament, the 2023 Winter Tournament, will be hosted there on February 4th. Uh, the venue will also host graduation ceremonies for Crossroads High School, Burleson Collegiate High School, Game Development and Design School students this school year. Thank you for providing a place to showcase these, uh, these events, and thank you for support, supporting our students and the technology department as a whole. so awesome to hear from each one of you and to see you together. Um, you know, the pictures and things that your campuses have provided that we have around the building are nice to see. But this has been absolutely, since I've been on the board, the best presentation that, that I have experienced as a board member. So just thank you. It's, it, you're just awesome. Awesome. Thank you all so very much. I, uh, I guess I want to finish up by saying those facilities, I think all of you, uh, some of you, if not many of you, were on this board and what you saw is the enhancements, the improvements, the love that has gone into these facilities since you all have been on the board. And uh, to me, showing you all uh, what you've done for our community and for our kids is, that was, that was quite a representation of that, I thought. And uh, I wanna say thank you for the investment of your time and your energy. You get paid, not very much. You get a meal once a month. And uh, I appreciate that. I also appreciate the fact that the good nature of, of, our, of our administrators. You know, we're all about fun, right? We like to have fun. That doesn't mean everything we do every day is fun. But generally, we have fun at work. And the good-natured humor, I appreciate. I think that's a reflection of this board. You reflect that back. And I can only imagine what you reflect to our students and our staff and our parents, and I tell you, that's a, that's a wonderful thing. So I appreciate you all being here. Love the sense of humor and the good natured camaraderie that you all have. And I think that's a reflection of the board that you all are comfortable being that in front of this board. That is a great culture. And thank you board for allowing that to be. It's very humbling to sit here and listen to all of you because you all are really what makes this district go round. Um, and the support you provide our teachers and the leadership for our students on the campuses, because that's why we are here. It's for those kiddos. So thank you so much. Okay, so now it's time for comments from individual board members. And I would like to first um, ask Andy Pickens to take a minute. Thank you, Madam President. I appreciate that. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> you know, in January of 2011, uh, well, prior to that, uh, I'd had a couple of people come to me and say, you should consider running for school board. And it just kind of took me out of clear, or came from the clear blue, and I said, I really hadn't thought about it before, but the more I thought about it, I thought, this would be a great way for me to serve my community. And so, to be sure, I waited till 4.55, and the deadline was 5 p.m. on the last day of filing to file to make sure that it was really what I felt like I needed to do, so I did. That was 2011, and most of you know that Last Wednesday was the first day of filing for this term, school board re-election. Uh, with that said, after four terms, which is 12 years, I've decided not to seek re-election <clears throat> to the Burleson ISD Board of Trustees. You know, when I started, Drew, our son, was first grade at Clinkscale Elementary, and he graduated this past May from Centennial High School. So, and I had the privilege of giving him, giving him his diploma, and so I felt like that was one of the reasons that I did this was for him and was uh, so proud to be able to do that. But anyway, this was a difficult decision for me. Though I was humbled and honored to serve our community in this capacity, it is time for change. And it also brings an opportunity to look ahead. Priorities and life situations often necessitate adjustments in direction. 
The past couple of years have been very challenging for me and my family, both professionally and personally. But I've always believed and I know that God has a plan. I want to thank Dr. Jimerson for his leadership, but most of all, his friendship. And in the most incredible team of people I've ever had the opportunity to serve with, and that goes for this group out here and across our district. And I'm so humbled to have been part of one eighth of this team. And tonight was very appropriate to see what's happened over the past 12 years that I've had the privilege to serve on this board and with some very incredible people. So with that said, I look forward to discovering what's next for me, but I look forward with anticipation and excitement to see what's in store for Burleson ISD because there are some great days ahead. So thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for giving a moment to share and know that I'll be cheering you on. I don't know what's next for me, but uh, probably haven't seen the last of me, but you never know. But don't uh, threaten us. I won't, but anyway. Yeah. But thank you for the opportunity to serve. You are going to keep showing up, right, until June. Oh, yes. Okay, just wanted to make sure. I quit. No, I knew that. I just, okay, anybody else? Well, I'm always opening my mouth, but I just want to brag on Burleson High School's SpongeBob. I had, uh, I, I'm not a SpongeBob fan, but I wasn't, but I have new esteem for the fellow. <laughs> no, seriously, the students, uh, the students really did a great job with that performance great job so that that was a, a neat thing to get to go and and see that and um, um, thank you for what you're doing it at VHS appreciate that Andy and we appreciate your service your dedication and your time and I know it was a hard decision for you and uh, it's been a fun ride and we appreciate we appreciate you and what all you've dedicated and done for this school district. All right. Anyone else? I'd just like to uh, reiterate what Pat had said about the principal's presentation. For those of us that have been in Burleson um, basically our entire lives, what a walk down memory lane when the names of the schools are mentioned, and we knew those people because we were born way before 1986. 1986? <laughs> yes, it, it, Sean was anyway. Yeah. But we, we appreciate that so much. And, you know, for all of us in school districts, we have a history of educators that really helped bring us where we are today. And I can't think of a better gift that you all could have given us as board members than that. So I know there are a lot of things you can do on Monday nights, but you were here to present that to us. And we love you and appreciate you. And those of you that have walked in your shoes, we know what you go through. And Thank you, thank you for doing this for our community and for our kids. All right. Okay. So now we are going to move into our information items. Are you introducing or do we just? Okay. Um, so we are going to have a safety, security, and intruder detection audit update. And Mr. Logan is going to introduce that um, I do have two safety and security updates tonight but before that I do want to thank all of you for all of your support um, and dedication to our students and staff in our district and our community um, thank you all for what you do uh, the first safety security update is going to be on our random intruder detection audits um, since the well in our second uh, update we have tonight is on our school safety officer program so since the last board meeting, um, we have had one campus that had an audit. Uh, that was Mound Elementary, and I'm happy to report that the auditor had no findings, or in other words, we passed. So <clears throat> thank you and congratulations to Ms. Bennett. Uh, thank you to you and your staff for making sure that you guys are following our safety and security protocols and procedures and doing everything you can to keep our students safe and secure every day. And for our second update, uh, I've asked Kurt Brannon, our school safety officer supervisor, to come up and, and do the update on our SSO program. So, Mr. Brannon. Thank you, Mr. Logan, and wow, what a great night to be here. As you guys are receiving accolades from all of these fine principals and educators, because we're here to add to that. 
My name's Curtis Brandon, and I am the uh, first one y'all picked. <laughs> well, uh, team leader, shall we say, for the school safety officer program, and I have with me tonight my second and uh, sidekick, Richard Morris. And he's going to be joining us up here. We're going to—they they say I don't talk fast enough to really get through all of this, so he's going to help me with that a little bit tonight. But what we want to do is just uh, just uh, share with you guys a little bit of what's been going on and uh, what y'all have initiated. You know, As school safety officers, we have a very critical and serious job, and, and we take it that way. And uh, each of the members of the safety team uh, have jointly expressed that and just what an honor it is to serve on this team. As acting in the capacity of the team leader for our SSO program and such, I, I, I've been tasked with putting together this team of the best and the most highly trained and experienced guardians for the sole purpose of protecting our elementary school children, teachers, and the staff, guests at school, and such. I've been given the opportunity to speak this evening and ask to update you on the progress of the SSO program. So with a couple of objectives in mind, I'd like to talk about uh, what a normal day looks like for a school safety officer and kind of walk you through that, what we do. And also I'd like to discuss with you some of the training that's been implemented that we've already accomplished, that we're in the process of doing and that we have scheduled coming up. Because you see what we do is it's essential that we're continually keeping the edge sharp. Even though all of these that you've selected, the SSOs are Officers of, I think, combined total of over 300 years of experience, 30 plus years at, at each school. Uh, we still need to train. We still need to keep that edge, and uh, we do so. And Richard and I have been have been tasked with that. And first, just let me recap for a moment. As you're all aware, this program was started as a result of the vision of Dr. Jimerson contacted me and <laughs> we had a big meet and uh, some lengthy interviews and uh, he asked me what we could do and then getting this type of program started. You guys started advertising for these positions and in a short period of time there were over 160 applicants for the 10 positions that we eventually filled. It was a selection process was started and after an interview board was assembled, that list of names was reduced to the 10 members that you have currently serving today. And they've appeared before you guys, and y'all have heard their background and their stories. They've been highly vetted, and you've made selection, and they are all in place currently at the different elementary schools around the BISD. Uh, my principal, Ms. Ankle is in here, and I know Richard is in here. Uh, we were told that the uh, other eight SSO officers uh, might be a little overcrowding the place this evening, so so you just have to settle with us. They, they, this team consists of myself and Richard, and Richard serving at Brock, his assistant team leader, and he's also an EMT. He's a master of defensive tactics with over 35 years of police experience. He was a gang sergeant, retired from Fort Worth. He and I worked elbow to elbow for many, many years. Deke Jones at Hike Elementary School. He's a retired Fort Worth officer with over 30 years of service in SWAT. He was a detective and uh, worked the street for many years. Gary Gray is at Taylor Elementary. Retired Fort Worth, a lieutenant, ex-military, also served in Afghanistan and Iraq training security forces and military. 
Brett McDonald's at Nolan Dunn, retired APD SWAT sergeant, and a very, very uh, capable uh, officer that we, that we uh, have enjoyed training with since he's been over here with us, Woody Holman. Fort Worth officers at Norwood. He's retired from Fort Worth PD, worked the streets for many, many years. All these guys were officers that served as street officers, not administrators or uh, politicians, but guys were out on the street doing the work, the ones that recognize a threat when one approaches, and the ones that we wanted at these campuses. John Dana. That Frazier, he retired from Fort Worth PD, most recently from TCU PD. Stacy Singleton, you all know, my, my buddy Stacy. He's at Branson, he retired from Burleson as the fire marshal here many, many years. His career's been about safety. And James Engel, we call him truck stop, that's because he's from Amarillo. <laughs> <laughs> and Stacy's a long time Police officer, ex-military, and just uh, just a great team that's been put together. Since I was the first team member selected, I spent some time with with uh, well Scott initially, Scott J. Hay and, and Steve, and they kind of was training me to what we needed. Dr. Jimerson's input, what you folks wanted here for the school district, but they asked me a lot of questions. You know, what did, in, in my experience and expertise, see that we needed and could contribute and how this team should be put together, and it's been a great honor to be, uh, be leading that task, be a part of it. And I've asked for a lot of things. <laughs> Dr. Jimerson, <laughs> Dr. Jimerson told me the other day when I made that comment, he said, oh, that's wonderful, We're glad to help, but you quit asking any time. Because he knows to. I'm just going to say, hey, Steve, let's figure out how to get it. <laughs> One of the things, and some of the things that we've had is, and, and asked for for his equipment is I, you know, I expressed to them, I said, you know, if our Safety officers are the first casualty. They do no one any good. We have to protect the protectors. I said, what I would really love to have, Dr. Jimerson, is some body armor for all of the officers that are out here on the front line, these safety officers. And so uh, they was provided. I brought it in here. Richard, you want to open that up for us? That's it. There's nobody in here, I promise you. Just, just brought it along. You saved it from work. Yeah, but the day ain't over. <laughs> just lay it down there. The, uh, we've mandated that each officer wears a shirt armor. And this, this armor, we all, you probably tell you, have been around the sun and see little bulge in our shirt. This is an under the shirt body armor that's uh, a very good defense against any small arms fire and certain edged and pointed weapons and things of that nature. And uh, it's been mandated. I told the guys, I said, look, you're going to be out here doing this job. I want it on you every day. The school district provided it, so <coughs> let's wear it and make sure that you do. That's not much good for. Uh, big guns, and so each officer also under their desk has what's called level three armor. You guys provided for all of our officers. And level three is like patrol officers wear. It's good for hitting weapons, rifles, and such. And so by keeping it under their desk, and we've trained on getting it on. You get it on in about two seconds. Getting it on in the event that there is some type of incident. Um, campus, then we're protecting the protectors. They can go and engage the assault or the threat in, in a safer way, but to be able to deal with it without being, as I said, the first casualty. They've also provided us, and when I went in, I was like, we'll fix you an office up. I said, 
No, no, you don't understand. We don't want offices. We don't work out of offices. We want to be in a position where we can see the campus, we can see outside, we can see the entrance way, we can see the doorway. So what you can do for us, instead of getting us an office, is prepare for us a nice, specially made desk. Now we'll get into any details of that desk with you in private session. It's not generally public information, but it's a special desk and it's put in a strategic place around the campus to where we can have the best view and be in the best position to intercept any threats. Generally where we can see the front door, the office area, and any approaches to the front of the school. So these are, these are two of the main things that, that we've been provided. And uh, we're also aware and, and watching for any issues that may be in our experience as police officer safety issues and we've pointed some of these things out. You guys spend a lot of money on locking systems at different campuses, but your front doors are glass and aluminum. And we as police officers have seen so many times Bubba in a pickup truck drive in and, and uh, rob the store or do whatever they want to do and, uh, and run off and leave the stolen vehicle inside the building. I cannot have that happen at a campus, so it's our recommendation that we have safety bollards put in position around these campuses so that that is not a possibility. And I believe we're getting pricing on those as we speak, right? See, we said yes. <laughs> so it's just some of the things that, that we've asked for and, and, and training. We've asked for uh, time to train. Um, so anytime the teachers have a professional day, we have a training day. Anytime the teachers are uh, training and the students aren't there on the campus, then we will have a training day. We've already had several of these so far. The school's also providing us with ammunition for range training. We've taken advantage of that to, to a great degree. And um, uh, we're making sure that all of our officers are staying sharp with their firearms safely and, 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 and accurately. Uh, and so uh, that, helps, that helps tremendously. And uh, some other things that we're looking forward to that has to do with training that'll be coming up in the near future. But I told you I'd talk you through a typical day in a SSO operation. Every SSO that you guys hired that came before this honorable board, their first day on duty was with me. And they came to Stribling, and I took them around and introduced them to folks. But I showed them how we start off and what we do and what we're looking for and the necessity of the security with these doors, entranceways, and uh, areas around the campus. We as police officers understand that the biggest threat's from the outside. Someone climbing over a fence or someone approaching from the roadway or the parking lot and walking up. I myself was at Wedgwood. A fellow named Westbrook just pulled up, got out of his car, walked in with a cigarette in one hand and a gun in the other and brought carnage on a bunch of kids at church. My heart can't let that happen again. I was in there in the middle of it. And so I'm insisting that these SSOs, these are the things that we have to watch for and how you have to stay on your toes. So they arrive at the school, so they get there at about 6.45, oh, dark 30, before the kids get there. And we meet, and then I show them what I do. Go inside the school, pick up my radio. Usually Mrs. Hinkle's either already beat me there some of the teachers are starting to come in, but I make the rounds and check the perimeter of the school first, make sure all the exterior doors are secured, make sure looking out over the playground there's no uh, people out there that shouldn't be, no visitors out there in that area, making sure that the outside of the school is secure. We look for suspicious vehicles, somebody sitting around out there that obviously doesn't uh, belong there. 
uh, things of this nature. And when we're happy with that, we walk the halls. And then I get back out to, if I'm taking too long, doctor, you just get the hook and drag No, it. I was just thinking because we were, the other day, apparently uh, our maintenance guys were out there. We couldn't really see their badges. <laughs> well, let's just say they'll be wearing their badges out there working on the fencing because they were spotted and identified really quickly. So... They miss some sleep too. So we walked, we, we, we walked the SSOs around the school, showed them, and this is, once we're secure, we're back at the front and we make sure that we're standing out there in a place, not with the teachers and not with the students, but in an area where we can see both teachers and students and vehicles pulling in and the bus parking lot and so on. So, so it looks like we're kind of maybe standing out there by ourselves, you know, and I guess maybe we are. That's what you do when you're on Overwatch. I don't have time to, as much as I love them and want to pat them on the head and they hook me around the kneecaps, I don't have time to talk to every kid and every teacher. I'm out there walking and looking and paying attention to what's going on. This is what we're, we're supposed to do, to be aware. And so once all of the students then are inside, off the buses and inside, and I see the teachers go inside, then I make another round around the buildings. I frequently run into Scott going around checking doors over there someplace. Check all the doors and then inside. And then of course you all know that we're in there shaking doors and find, find one open, gotcha, you know. <laughs> checking, very rarely do we find find doors open in there, but no, but the teachers see me come in and they double check real quick, you know. <laughs> check all the doors on the inside, we make all the rounds, and once we're satisfied and school's buttoned down inside and out, then we'll go to our station. I call it a station, it's not an office. My station consists of several. I've got a table in the middle aisle way out there, and I've got one in front, and then I've got a bar stool outside. Outside the front door, and sometimes I like to sit out there, but spend a lot of time just walking around the campus. And if those kids are outside at PE, they deserve and they get special attention. So I may be in a vehicle sitting over watching over the fence where I can see all the fence, make sure nobody hops the fence and nobody's coming in from that direction. Thank you. Uh, so I take these guys around and, and show them these things, how we check the doors and the importance of it and such. We've had training sessions on that Richard's gonna talk with you about in just a moment. He's not gonna let me get up and say anything without him getting to say something to you. So, uh, once, they, once they made the rounds with me, then they were taken to Scott and Steve and they were given their ID badges, computers, and the whole nine yards as far as the new hires, and then we personally took them to their schools, introduced them to their principals, and made around with them. Scott looked at areas and discussed with them, leaning on their experience as police officers where the best stations may be to put their desks and such. And so it's just been a building, a building uh, wonderful time for we as an A team to, to work together and to share with each other. Every member of this team has something special to bring. That's why they were chosen. Richard's an EMT and a, and a master martial artist. And we y'all all know Stacy, you know, how much he brings to the team. Each of these officers worked in different areas and investigations and uh, things that we felt like would be a, a, an addition to the team in a great way. So, uh, doors, doors, and doors. Watching outside, being outside, and sometimes we feel bad, and I had to talk to Richard about it, about not being over there moving boxes for a teacher, or helping somebody with doors, being a doorman, in other words, or doing things like that, because if we're doing that, we're not doing our job. And our job is to oversee that campus. First outside, and then of course, heaven forbid, if something got inside, we're armored up and we're going straight to the threat. That's what we do. We've done quite a bit of training. My first training was with Scott, and we sat down and watched a, I don't know how long, was a three or four hour video. 
uh, on SRP standard response protocol, things that all the, all the SROs received later received training in. And then over the time to come, I don't even have everything logged because it's frequently I would go to their school and meet with them and discuss a training issue with them or something that needed to be, pat them down, make sure they have their vest on, make sure their weapons are stored in the proper level two lockdown secured type holster. These are all professionals, so it didn't take a lot of that. They're real tickled when they come around though. Yeah. We did the crisis go system. We we worked on we one day on the 22nd November 10th of, of last year. We did the crisis go. We did AED CPR. Stop the bleed that Stacy taught. Uh, Scott taught the SRP standard response protocol and SRM standard reunification method after an event like that was to happen. So all of our guys were being well versed in these things and. Uh, uh, it, it's, it's really paying dividends. Each one of them are just really appreciative of the training and the new information and, and are receiving it so well. I'm just, I'm really very, very proud of this team and, and I hope that you guys will. It's going to continue to get better and better. Over the December break, we went to the Alpine Range and we spent a day out there shooting. And so I could see them competently handle their firearms and uh, that they could hit the side of a barn, which all of them were able to. And, uh, you know, I wanted to be able to, to attest to that if any questions were ever asked. But I think my favorite training days was on Thursday, January 5th, uh, and January, Friday, January 6th were training days for the teachers. So we took advantage of that. And on that Thursday, we went to my training facility in Fort Worth, it's a martial arts training facility, a defensive tactics school, and the the ten person team joined together, and we spent the day in there working on defensive tactics, on knife attacks, club attacks, disarming, taking weapons away from people that are close to you that may be coming out of their pants with a pistol or may run in the door and have a long gun, things of this nature. And uh, it was, most of these guys, this was things they had learned before. Uh, several of them came to me and said, wow, that was a guy really needed to freshen up on that and do it. it defensive tactics, something you need to practice continually. And we, we plan to do that over and over again. I'd much rather be able to take a, a knife away from someone or a pistol away from someone than have to escalate that force, okay? even though that's deadly force, and most all police officers feel that way. But the really fun day was the next day on Friday, and we went to Fort Worth Police Sim Range, and Sim course is this, you guys would all love it, especially if you love video games and things, which I don't, but this is a theater <laughs> in the round. This is a theater in the round, and you're surrounded by and this one scenario was a school and a principal standing out talking to a fellow in the pickup truck. And in this scenario, each officer is put in there alone. Everybody does it without the other seeing it except for me. I, got the, I did it first and let everybody else watch them. The officer of the SSO is called out there and the principal says, this man won't leave, he's been fired, he's not supposed to be on the campus. And about that time, he turns and says, he's got a gun, and he starts running to the front door of the school. Much like most of y'all, glass and brass and aluminum and, and stuff. So the scenario is, what do you do? Because the guy gets out of the truck with a pistol and he's holding it to his own head with his back to you, and he starts walking towards the school. He's going to the front door, like this. So the question is, and I'm gonna leave that with y'all, is what do you do? Gee, thanks, Kurt. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, that simulator is 360. It is. It's live. <clears throat>
and you it looks have like life, and you're in the center on a pedestal, and it looks like it's real life. All it looks like it's real sure. life, and you have a you have like a Glock 17, and when you fire it, <coughs> sound effects, and you go boom. So it's really realistic, and where your <coughs> round hits, when they come back and they play it back slow motion, will show you if you missed, if you hit, if you went and shot a hole in the back of the pickup truck or in the ceiling or whatever. So it's just fantastic training. And we're gonna be doing a lot more of that. We're gonna be doing a lot more of that because nothing like simulated circumstances, situations like this that really, really will, will get you to thinking and get you to um, visualize and to be prepared to act. Most of these guys, they've been doing this all their career. You know, military and police work, and all of us are that way. But even still, these things are good. It, that thing would give you cold chills because they just played it all the way through once and the guy got inside, you just hear boom, 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 inside. And it just, oh, it's just sickening sound. It's not gonna happen at our schools around here. You guys have a magnificent team. Thanks to you folks. And, Dr. Jimerson, y'all putting this together that's out there and on guard duty to make sure that it doesn't and we all take it very seriously. Richard wanted to talk about some of the training that we did as an AMT very briefly and I don't know if you have question and answer session Dr. Jimerson, or anybody may have any. If but they if have you do, questions, they will ask. If you do, ask Richard. <laughs> okay. And uh, again, congratulations to this wonderful board. We thank you wonderful because you put us all in place to do what we consider is the ultimate job that any of us have ever had. Parents and teachers are continually coming up and giving us high fives, shaking our hand. Christmas was wonderful. I had more cookies and candy <laughs> and cards. It was amazing. And the teachers continually telling us, we just really appreciate you guys, you being here. I didn't feel safe before, but appreciate you guys being here. And we appreciate being there and, and, and being a part of it. And again, thank you, Dr. Jimerson, Steve, Scott, all you guys for putting this together. And my boss and his boss and, you know, we just, uh, and your boss and all of our boss. And you know what? It's just been a wonderful working relationship in putting this team together. And I want to thank you for it. Richard, good. Thank you, Kurt. Get this. I don't think I did it. Okay. <laughs> Oh, it just came apart. Yeah. Thank you. you want that one? And by the way, I had the pleasure of going, and uh, they invited me out to a to a workout session. These guys still uh, practice martial arts, well, pretty much daily, but they get together about once a week, and they invited me out. And I got to tell you, what, you talked about you talk slow. Let me tell you something, he don't move slow. <laughs> and I tell you, he was out rolling around on the mat and had some guy pinned up in a hold and he couldn't move and this is a fifth degree black belt that he's holding down and has him on. I was impressed. And I knew then, I hope I can outrun him. <laughs> Thank you. Well, Kurt Brennan, I talked to him, I fussed at him, what in the world are you doing taking a job? Dude, we're retired. You know, we're trying to get all the police stuff out of our head, all the things we've seen. We've seen some horrible things. And then he said, this is different. This is different. This is elementary schools. Our only goal is to keep them safe, the teachers safe, the, the visitors and parents safe. And I, that's when I came down. I said, well, let me talk to my wife. We prayed together. And then I came down and met with Dr. Jimerson and also with, uh, were you there too also, Scott? I know that Steve, Steve was there and spent it pretty much a day together. And I feel like this is the most important job I've ever done. I've protected presidents, movie stars, 
celebrities of all types. I've worked drug cartel, uh, went undercover in a satanic gang to save some kids. I've done some things that I thought were important, and they were, but this is the most important. These are our children. Mm -hmm. And not only have I lo I've learned a great deal from Dr. Jimerson and from, from Steve and from Scott and from the principal and from the staff, I'm learning every day, but I also learn from the teachers. I'm learning from the children. And one thing I found is they were scared to death before we came there. And some of them said, I, I didn't want to say anything, but I've been scared. This is also the parents. So we haven't had one parent come in and tell us we wish you weren't here. Even one of the schools had a, one of the dads was a bandito, and he came in and said, thank you for protecting our children. <laughs> I thought, well, that's, that's good. It spreads wide and far. Everybody wants their children safe, and I do think this is the most important job I've ever done. It also has been good for me physically. I've lost uh, 14 pounds on the red-headed first grader diet. <laughs> and if you hadn't heard what that is, I had a little red-headed boy. I, I was wearing the vest. I was wearing the vest. It does make you stick out. Yeah, whatever, Richard. Come on. Man. <laughs> little fella hugged my leg and looked up little curly red hair, and he looked up and he said, are you pregnant? <laughs> I said, no, but I'm working out when I get home. I've lost 14 pounds. So I thank that little kid every time I see him. It's... But the joy that I see from the kids, the love I see from the teachers and the staff, even in the difficult times, my daughter's a school teacher, has been for 12, 14 years. I didn't really understand her until I, I came to this job. And I realize, oh my gosh, this is hard. <laughs> but I'm so proud, I'm so thankful, I'm so blessed to be able to work the, the quality of people that I work with. And all the SSOs say the same. We all, we love our jobs. Mm -hmm. We get, we carry little things home. I showed my wife, uh, or a, a, one of the little girls, drew me a cat. And <laughs> so we get some, I, I saved that stuff, by the way. But so did the others. So here are these guys, tough SWAT guys, and Kurt and I are tough karate guys. And, and oh, those little kids, they, they just get us. We can't help it. We just love them so much. So that's why we're willing. Kurt and I train a lot of hours on our own time down at the gun range. We're good shots. We both scored 100 today in our uh, handgun test. But we want to do better than that. We've got to be good because we don't want the children... First, we don't want the children to see any violence at all. They see us, they see that we love them, and they think that we're funny, maybe look funny, maybe should lose some weight, but they know that we love them. And they don't have the same kind of fear, even since I started at, at our school, because there were a lot of kids that would uh, miss sleep at night. The parents would say, this has really made a difference having us there. But that was from the, the vision from this board, and Dr. Jimerson, who helped to... Uh, spur this forward. Had you not done this, just imagine where we would be today. Look at what happened in Fort Worth across from Pascal High School last week. Look at what happened when the six-year-old shot his teacher a few weeks ago. Violence is all over the country. But I think people are afraid to come here and mess with our schools because we're going to take real good care of them. We'll make sure that they don't hurt anyone. If anybody gets to get hurt, it's going to be them. And we hope and pray that doesn't happen. So we're all praying, men. We walk up and down the halls praying for the teachers, praying for the staff, praying for the children, praying, praying for their parents, praying for the families of the teachers because we know that we need extra help. And I don't mind asking the head of this universe for a little bit of extra help to take care of these schools because we love these kids. I'm an EMT. I became an EMT after I was a, uh, retired as a police officer because I realized how many people I lost uh, I've had many, many, many people die in my arms, as children, adults, accidents, shootings, you name it. I've, I've, I've seen so many things, and I thought I want to do something better. And so by getting that training and working in the ambulances and the hospitals for a little while, I just doing the training, I, did, I wasn't looking for a job, but it gives me the opportunity to, to think differently on how we can keep our children, our teachers, and ourselves safe. And so... I talked to, when we went down to the range, and Kirk Byram there said he'll do anything that he can to help us. By the way, I, I started the first tactical medical stuff in the Fort Worth Police Department because I had it for the gang unit. 
I raised a little over $30,000. I got, I got medical training, a tactical medical training for every one of the gang members. We had 36 people in, in my gang division when I was uh, acting lieutenant. And we also got them bulletproof vests, the helmets, everything that we thought they would need to be safe. And I'm glad to say for the five years that I was there, and even since then, not one of them has been shot. Not one of them has been hurt. And so the city of Fort Worth, uh, Marty Humphreys, uh, with the health, she said, Richard, tell me what you did there. I'd like to see maybe our whole department get this. I said, I'll help. And so I helped her, showed her what we did, who we had, what we were giving, what we were expecting. And now all the police department has the opportunity to get this tactical medical training, which has already saved many lives. Uh, I was a police chaplain for 27 years. As a matter of fact, I retired from all police work, from the gang and terrorism task force, from watching the news as of a year ago in December. I decided I've seen enough of that. I want to see something positive. But oddly enough, coming here, taking on that added responsibility has not only been fun for me to up my skills, help these other SSOs up their skills, train everybody that we can, but I'm going to tell you, I still don't watch the news. I still don't watch the news. People, people tell me what happens, but I'm usually watching Little House on the Prairie. Here. Oh, it's just an old stop, show. Yeah. It's an old show. Laura Ingalls, really? Uh, she was kidding. so cute. <laughs> Wrong show. He said good night, John Boy. Wrong show. <laughs> but anyway, so Kurt Byram is also a tactical paramedic. And he, I guess he started with the medical EMT stuff with the police department and moving forward after I helped get the program started for the tactical medical stuff. And he's going to work with us, help me keep my certification, help Stacy Singleton keep his certification take us farther than that in our certifications, get us more training, and train our teams. So it's important because as a the school safety officer, we're the only one there that's going to be there to protect 600 to 1,000 or 12 or 1,400 people. So we can't get hurt. And we have to make sure also that we keep people in such a position where they don't get hurt. And then we work with the nurses, we talk to the people at the campus, we do everything we can to try to put together a, a systematic approach to keeping everybody safe. You can't wait until it's happened before you make a decision. You've got to make those decisions now, you've got to plan and prepare now. You cannot uh, prepare for a crisis in the midst of a crisis. It's just too late. And I, I feel blessed to be on this team, and uh, Kurt Brennan and I have been friends for 42 years. We have probably 100 years or more karate experience between the two of us, karate, boxing, and, and so forth, judo. And we are able to share that with the team, too. And I, for me, that's a blessing. And I'm grateful. And I'm grateful to the principals, especially mine. I'm very thankful. God bless you. Thank you, Richard. And thank you, Kurt. We appreciate you guys. Appreciate you uh, sharing with us and informing us of of, uh, well, where we started, where we are, what you do. And of course, uh, you know, what we've learned is that the learning will be ongoing. And uh, we've learned a lot. You've taught us a, an incredible amount. Uh, and of course, and I always tease about, you know, he, he asked and that, hang it, Richard, quit asking, you know, or, or Kurt, quit asking, or Richard. Fact is, that's what we ask them, what do you need? And when they do, we go about trying to get it as quickly as we can because they're the experts and they are there for, uh, for our kids, for our staff, to ensure their safety. And when, when they say they need it, we defer and we get it. And uh, I say we. Our incredible staff does. But and that also goes back to this board because those board provided the resources Absolutely. that we can actually do it. So we appreciate that. The Ballards are coming. They are. Quickly. Especially now that Kurt's already let the cat out. <laughs> so we got to move quickly on that. We've got a number of other physical upgrades to our buildings that are ongoing. We're not going to discuss those. Uh, we've got quite a few that are in the works right now that have been ongoing and will continue to be ongoing and we will continue to improve. Uh, 
There's a whole bunch of those things that are that are in the works. Absolutely. Um, like I said, we've only we've only just begun, and uh, we'll just keep moving forward. So, Steve, appreciate your staff and your folks, and uh, working to make sure that this program is successful and that we have the professionals that we have, and they have what they need to be successful as well. Absolutely. And I, I will leave a final thing. He's mentioned Brett McDonald, and Brett told, was it you, Scott? He told that story. Scott went out and talked to him. Uh, Brett is at, uh, he's the SSO at the Academy at Nola Dunn. And I'll paraphrase here, but Brett said, you know, for over 30 years, uh, I would go home, uh, having been cussed at all day, People, uh, when I show up a lot of times, don't want me there, so on and so forth. And he said, for the first time in over 30 years, I drive home with a smile on my face. My family, when I walk in the door, has a new dad, has a new guy walking through the door who's actually smiling and in good spirits. He said, now people are high-fiving him. Thank you for being here. We appreciate what you're doing. Love having you here, which is the opposite. And he said, I wouldn't trade this for anything. That's awesome. So I, I just... The community support and in, in, in the way they've embraced these officers has been has been tremendous. It's been a blessing to me. And uh, so anyway, I thought that was very telling. So anyway, appreciate you guys. Thank you for what you're doing. Sure. Steve, appreciate you. So I'd be happy to answer any questions for anybody who has anything. The audit that was done. Okay. Uh -huh. The audit that was done, was that an internal or was that one of the state audits? That was a state audit. It was a state audit. Yes. Anyone? Questions? Steve, thank you. Okay, thank you guys. To the principals, please thank your staff for being willing because I know this is a change in operation in a lot of ways and for making the kids still have a regular school day because I know that that's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. And I want to thank the community members that have stayed with us through this and continue to show up and maintain their interest because it does take a village when we are doing this kind of thing. And um, so thank you to everybody. All right, let's move on to approving our consent agenda. I would like a motion to approve tonight's consent agenda as presented, please. Michael first, Andy second. All in favor, please raise your hand. All right, and I see there will be none opposed, so the motion carries. Okay, Brenda, financials. Um, happy Board Appreciation Month. I hope you never forget how grateful we are for all that you do. Um, I'm going to grab this. This was falling, uh, Mr. Brandon, when you were speaking, and I was going to grab it, and I thought you would take me down. And I thought, <laughs> I'm going to let it just fall. I was so scared. No was sudden like, movements. I no like, sudden I know, movements. I know. I was so nervous. I'm like, yeah, but you might can outrun them. Yeah. The, but, I but don't know, close. but I'm going to tell you I mean, what. If you really saw close, what I saw I that like, day, yeah. you better run. That's right. She's so. going to run. I may be stupid, but I know smart that I'm not going to touch that. So anyway, okay, so uh, on to the financials for November. Fun fact is we're doing the financials, Michaela. This is a fun fact for me. The fun is about to end is probably what this fun fact is. Um, going for the general fund revenue dashboard, if you'll look up here, we're at about 25% for our actual year-to-date revenues. We're on track with our local sources at about 8%. And then our state sources, we start getting our state funding to so at about 45%. Um, projected was at 43, and um, our top 10 resources consist of about 99% of our revenues. Oops, sorry. <laughs> I should have caught it. For expenditures, um, year to date, we're at 32%. We're right on track at about 30% projected. Uh, our year to date in instruction is at 27%, and then our actual payroll costs are at 28%, right on track for 28.26 from last year. General fund compared to last year, if you'll see, we're at 31 million. Um, last year we're at about 30 million for revenues, and then our expenditures are at 38.3 million for expenditures. Food service, uh, we're at 2.8 million. We are down from last year. Our federal program, we know that that's where the area that we're down, but our local um, revenues have increased. 
For debt service, um, we're starting to receive our tax revenues. We're at 2.4 million, and then our expenditures consist of our bond payment that we paid in August at 22.9 million. For special revenue funds, uh, we're at 30.7%. You'll see that we're ending for our September the 2022, and then moving on to the 2023 school year. Child care uh, revenues are at 208,000 uh, for the year up to November, and then our expenditures are at 214,000. Uh, capital projects for oil and gas. Um, our beginning balance is at 12.5 million. We have seen an increase in revenues um, for interest and then also for our minerals. So our royalties um, have been slowly increasing, which has been nice this year. Uh, so we started at 12.5, we're adding 534,000. Our expenditures are at 17, so oil and gas uh, balance is at 13 million 21,000. For payments over 10,000, you'll see um, it's split up between our funds, uh, between 161 majority out of 199. It's our uh, customary utilities, custodial supplies, um, security equipment, licensing, renewing, things of that nature. Um, if you have any questions, it's uh, listed in your packet. For our tax report, um, as I mentioned, we start collecting um, a little bit more during this time of the year. In November, we've collected $5 million, um, and in year-to-date, we're at about $6.7 And then for capital projects uh, listed, um, we have Norwood and Mount, which are just in their beginning stages, uh, GDDS ending up there, and then the higher ed facility. So they opened uh, last week and the students were in there and it was really neat to see. We went on our meeting on Thursday and we actually saw stud students in the classrooms and a uh, lot of bright lights, all the windows were great. And so um, it's really exciting to see. And I believe it's going to be a uh, hill is going to host a dedication ceremony yeah. sometime in the very near future. Yeah. So look forward to that. It's be in fun February. Too. I don't uh, more details to come, but I do know that they are planning it. And that'll be fun. Yeah, I think they're excited to be in the building there. It's it's fresh in there The they have a student commons area. And so you see students hanging out. And so I think that was the it idea, actually so. has the look mm -hmm. and feel of a college. Yeah. And it is beautiful over on the inside. Who knew? I know. Well, we knew because we've done a few of those. But anyway, <laughs> we knew that it is beautiful. Yeah. It, it turned out great. That, that old building is new again. Mm -hmm. Saw a lot of kids. It was exciting. Um, and then that's it for regular financials. And then I have a few um, action items. Maybe go ahead and proceed on my action items. Okay, first one is budget amendments. If you'll see, it's just some um, reclassifications amongst functions. Um, there is no change in the revenues or expenditures. It's just asking the board to approve the reclassifications amongst funds, functions. Excuse me. I am sorry. Please have a motion that we approve the budget amendments as presented. Jerry and Pat, all in favor? Please raise your hand. I see there will be none opposed, so the motion carries. Thank you. And then my last one is, um, it's the Region 10 Multi-Region Purchasing Cooperative. Mm -hmm. um, we're just asking for the board to approve that we become a member of it. There's no cost, but it does give us volume purchasing for our food items. Um, and so we are happy to join that again if you approve, so that way we can get discounted pricing and the best uh, products in for our district. Uh, could I please have a motion from the board to approve the Region 10 Multi-Region Purchasing Cooperative Interlocal Agreement, please? Brian, and then second, please. Andy, and all in favor? All right, I see there will be none opposed. So the motion passes. Thank you. And, I'm sorry. Thank you, Brenda. Thank you. Um, then we have an action item to consider the School Health Advisory Council CHAC which many of you may know them by health curriculum recommendations with Ms. Courtney Peets. Hi, good evening. Uh, first, I want to say thank you for all you do. I really enjoy tonight. I've lived here all my life, gone to all Frazier at the old scene, um, graduated from BHS, went to Hughes, and so it was a lot of fun just to hear that. Ms. Brock taught GT when I was in elementary school, so just a lot of fun, um, but I wanted you all to know that Kelly Clarkson is my friend. She didn't go to my school, so I think I went on a Kelly Clarkson name drop. Do y'all still have girls weekends? Not anymore. Okay, She's a little bit busy right now, um, but. Yeah, that whole show and thing. It's, yeah. it's ridiculous, but anyway, um, just thank you for all you do, so. 
Our school health advisory council was tasked to review our health curriculum and hold open meetings for the public to review the proposed materials. I want to say thank you to our council members, um, Michelle Green, she's the co-chair. She couldn't be here tonight. She's a mom with busy sports season right now. Um, but they have invested a lot of their time already this year, and we're only in January. So I just wanted to say thank you to them for that. Um, they have come up with the following recommendations, which would include the council recommends no changes to the health instruction in the elementary grades and no changes to the child safety and wellness instruction. So basically, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Just keep on keeping on. The council also recommends by adding a health as an elective course to address the health teaks at the secondary level. Um, they would like to use the health and wellness curriculum developed by Goodhart Wilcox. This curriculum has been vetted and approved by TEA and reviewed by our curriculum department and the SHAC and has been available for public review as well. So those are our recommendations that were coming regarding our health curriculum. Any questions? Anybody? All right, I'm just asking for you to accept and approve the recommendations. All right, I would like a motion that the Board of Trustees approve this School Health Advisory Council, SHAC, recommendations as presented. Sean, in a second, please. Michael? Okay. <laughs> in, well, I had, okay, all in favor, please raise your hand. All right. I see there will be none opposed, so the motion passes. And uh, Courtney, and all those that are listening and are members of the SHAC committee, we do appreciate them volunteering their time, uh, professionals, parents, the whole gamut come together to review this and provide that feedback and, re feedback and recommendations. I appreciate the board uh, for honoring those, uh, the time and effort they put in and the recommendations they make from our community and from our parents. So, and please extend our thanks to them. All right, so there is no other business on our agenda this evening. So at 8.07, our meeting is adjourned. And Happy New Year, everybody. Mm -hmm.